Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our special Marathon Talk special that we've not changed the name of special where we talk about marathon special. <laughs> There's a lot of specials. But it's a lot of special. It's quite a special episode. Uh, but we've got two special human beings on here, me and the Hobbit, Hayden, is here. So welcome along to our Marathon Talk. So we've done another one, basically, Hayden, by popular demand, would you say? Oh, I would say there's a lot of demand, a lot of good comments, a lot of nice comments. So, yeah, thank you. Very, yeah, we really appreciate really welcomed. that. Yeah, we really genuinely appreciate it. So, if you're new around here, this is sort of a, a one-off that we do. We're going we're gonna to try and do these monthly. Let us know if you want to see more or less of them, whatever. And where we sort of really hone in on um, marathons, right? So, on a Monday live stream, when we called that live, I talk about, like, I'm a running coach, so I talk about... Well, basically, it's a live audience, so whatever you want to talk about that night. But it's a little bit more skew tools, running shoes and things. But there's also now, it's great that I'm getting more coaching questions, okay? So that's on a Monday, 8 o'clock UK time. We do that. Then on a Friday live, because we record it live, because we just don't care, we have our um, sort of long-run show, the award-winning podcast that uh, we've got a, a panel of coaches on now, or run leaders, and we talk about what the everyday runners thinking about, right? So subjects, whether it's... I want to get faster over 5k or how do I fuel for a half marathon or what should I do in winter training? All that kind of stuff, right? We pick that up on a Friday and that's live and you guys get involved in that as well. Okay. So we record that. So this is like a special where Hayden and I, who absolutely love marathons and marathon training, and we've done a fair few between us, Harrison and Harrison, uh, Hayden, Harrison, that's a good name for you. Uh, Hayden is a is a six star finisher. Uh, he's done all the world majors, although we'll come on to that. And myself, I've done uh, I don't know even how many, but we've done a few. Okay, so that's the experience again. I'm a running coach. Hayden's a run leader, very experienced runners, I would say. Still learning at the marathon. I think that's fair to say. But we just love talking about marathons. Okay, so now you've got the picture. Set it for the second episode. Done a good job there, Hayden. I think so. Joe, you, know you just picked up on something really important there. You said mm. you think we're, even though we're quite experienced, we're still learning. Mm. I would say the most experienced marathon, in the, marathon runner in the world is probably still learning. It's one of them events. Mm. It's one of them things. And this is why we can talk about it all day because you're always going to learn. I think every time you turn up on that start line, there's there's something new. Something every new. marathon I've done, I've learned something. Yeah, honestly, yeah. that's. Yeah. And it, it, I think it is that distance. Obviously, I've not done an ultra, right? So I can't comment on that. Mm. I have done one by accident, but it wasn't classed as an ultra. Um, <laughs> but I think, I think it's probably the distance that you learn the most from because you because you don't run the distance in training, or some like do, but whatever. But most people don't. You know, you go through that taper, maybe once, it might be the first time, so you don't understand know what the best thing to do that taper is. You go through all that sort of stuff that you wouldn't normally do, right? And I think that's the that's the things you learn from, and you. You pace yourself over that distance. You fuel over that distance. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, right? And I think you're right. That's that's where it's uh, you're learning. So uh, just uh, this week or this month, we thought we we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll go back over like New York Marathon because that was in November. That was a little, sort of the last world major. Uh, what we do want to talk about also is the fact that now we've got Sydney coming in. I think that's an interesting topic. We'll pick that up. Uh, and I think um, because we will look forward the next episode we do, I think that's a, that'd be a great thing to talk about. What stuff we're looking forward to what marathons we're doing but why and all that kind of stuff we'll talk about that a little bit in uh, the december let's say issue and if, if if you've got any questions that you want us to discuss in the episode get in uh emailing hello at 40 runs.com and we'll pick them up but yes yeah, so i thought we'd look back a bit if that's all right with you big boy yep absolutely fine sounds good okay so um new york city marathon uh took place in november uh, we've both done uh, New York, by the way. Uh, it's a world major marathon. And I think I think the New York City Marathon was a little bit lost in all the sort of uh, furore that went on outside of that, uh, which I think is fair to say. The actual running side of things kind of got lost um, because of what happened. But I think it, it again showed uh, with regards to the New York City Marathon how, how New York came out to celebrate runners. I think it's the, it's the same with with London it's, it's quite an amazing thing how the city sort of oh, someone said someone said somewhere that it's like it's the coolest day to be in the city like in London or New York when the marathon's on because you 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 get that energy you get that vibe it's quite a it's quite an experience to be and, and if you've not you know don't fancy doing either of those but you know it's, it, but you fancy like feeling it then I'd strongly recommend 
watching it, going along physically and watching it, but also we do it at the 40 Rounds Running Club, volunteer. Yeah. Great way to experience a marathon, Hayden, don't you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. And going back to the spectating side of things as well, you're spot on about that, about being there and having that atmosphere. So our very own Ben, who joined us on a Friday, he was out in New York um, this November and he had a couple of, which he calls his like cheerleaders, his two supporters yeah, went out there. And both of them literally had the absolute time of their life. Mm. None, none of them running, but they're still there. They still soak up the atmosphere. They still get it. You still get that feeling. I've, I've, I've been there in the past London before I'd even run London. I remember being up there and that emotion and that... that that crowd, the roar, you even mm. watching, you still get that and you get that feeling in your gut and you're like, I really want to do this. So mm. yeah, absolutely. Being part of that, just go down there and spectate and you get that buzz and that feel. And Definitely. it is an overwhelming sensation at, at New York and London, the crowds. I mean, yeah. you know, Berlin's great and, and you, I mean, you've done all of them, but I think those two, the crowds are just insane, right? In, in, in some areas, it's, it's, it's totally crazy um it's obvious I, I do I, and i know he's a huge fan of the channel casey neistat yeah i mean I don't, I don't know if you saw that but if you don't know casey neistat is like the the godfather of vlogging on youtube um he's a he's a, a yeah famous youtuber and he's he's but he's a runner okay and he runs eight to ten miles every day takes no rest days right which i think is just unbelievable there's a video he did last might have been this year where he told his story of how he's been trying to break the sub three hour marathon. All right. And it's a great video. Even if you don't really care for vloggers and vlogging and all that sort of stuff, it's really, and you, but you're into running like we are. It's a really good story about how, you know, he was like broken, never thought he would run again. And he's been trying, he runs the New York City Marathon every year and he's been trying to get this sub three. And then eventually when he did it, but he did it somewhere else. I think it was in Tucson. So this year, he went to New York City Marathon and he finally ran sub three at the New York City. And I saw a funny uh, TikTok video he did about how he's not going to wave to anyone because he thought that might That's save funny. energy. It was really good. It worked out exactly how many calories he burns every yeah. time he waves his hand <laughs> and stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, it was so good. But I have to give him credit because he, he ran them in the Brooks Glittery Max, which is a fantastic <laughs> shoe as well. Um, so, again, it just shows you don't need carbon plates or any of that sort of stuff. Uh, he absolutely smashed it. Uh, and I think that was just... Really cool to see because of the story that was related um, that you I, I sort of, I don't know, I related to it a little bit, not the times, but the efforts that's gone into him doing all this training and trying to beat this goal because the marathon is so hard. Mm. And then to finally see him do it. And and he's, I don't know if you've seen how he was like, his, his missus was absolutely like going nuts going when nuts, he finished. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just it's incredible to see. So that, again, that's a, you know, a nice story to see um, come out. There were so many positive stories um come out of the new york city marathon they say that unfortunately they've been overshadowed but uh, I, saw, I saw new york new york do it i think every year london always seems to have a thing around it new york always cheering that last cross oh, it's cross brilliant i love that, that as well yeah it's really like dark it gets dark early in new york this sort of time yeah. of year but that last person went across the line and you've got all the floodlights up and everyone comes out to cheer because they have like a finish line party afterwards and that brilliant. is some atmosphere that looks like it's a fair yeah, play to no, there for a long time brilliant absolutely brilliant well done New York Roadrunners, well done. Uh, uh, amazing. So uh, just moving on, Hayden, because straight after the New York City Marathon, we obviously had the announcement from uh, Abbott's World Majors that Sydney was, and I mean, it's, it's not like it was a secret or anything, but yeah. Sydney uh, from next year will become the seventh star, let's say. So I've got here. So uh, race uh, secured um, second assessment pass to join the Majors. Uh, the largest marathon in Oceania will join the series in 2025. So that's next year. Uh, there's a ballot, uh, there's charity places, and I think like international runners can do it via tour companies. Correct. There's going to be two more marathons aiming to join the series in 2027. They're rumoured to be Cape Town and Shanghai, I think. Yep. That will then be part of a nine medal um, milestone. So that's the next milestone that they're looking to add in is, the, is a nine medal. The six, the six star um, medal will stay, and you'll get that completed on the on the original um, majors that yeah. you do. So it's going to go. You eventually will have a ninth one, and then, um, but that won't be available until two two thousand twenty seven. If obviously all the others pass. Now, watch as some as again as a, as a six star finisher. What's your thoughts on that? 
uh, to be honest with you, people have been saying it for ages. You're going to have to go for a seventh, and you can, if, when you actually think about it, you break it down. To be fair to Abbott, it makes sense. We've always said it um, within the podcast, within the club, within the running world. You need to innovate. You need to have new ideas and fresh ideas and do something new. Can Abbott just sit back for the next 15, 20 years and have these six races mm. and knock out these medals? No, they're thinking let's do something new. And to be fair to them, they want to bring marathon, world major marathons to every continent in mm. the world. They have, there isn't one in Australasia at the moment. There isn't one in Asia. There isn't one in Africa. So they, they want to bring them to these places. So from that perspective, I think it's absolutely fantastic. The biggest uproar from a lot of people is obviously it, people talking about cost and traveling. But again, these are probably Americans that are talking about this or people from the UK and Europe. They're thinking, I've got to go all the way to Australia. What about the people that live in Australia, the people that live in Asia? Mm. Uh, uh, this Messy Happy, absolutely fantastic YouTube channel, the pair of mm. them. And they're, they're, they're really close to getting their six stars now. But every time they come over to America, so we're talking Boston, Chicago and New York, their journey is like a oh, 36 awful. hour it's journey awful. or something. So for them, so to hop over to Australia, it works for them. So who to say is like Sydney's too far away, too far away for who? So if you're in that part of the world, I think it's a great addition to it. it I think they've done the right thing with not, almost incorporating a seven star and saying there'd be a new medal mm. for this, a new medal for that, giving people a bit of time. The only downside is, I think we both alluded to it, for me to get it and you, probably we'll be drawing out our pensions by then. So You definitely will be. You're, do, you're, <laughs> do, you're doing that now. So it's going to be, it's going to be did, difficult. It's a long I way I did off. bring him and say he's going to be in his Zimmer frame when he's going round. <laughs> no, no, wait, I'm still going to finish it. Get your medal. I'd say the only other downside, apart from me drawing my pension, having to run them, is obviously there's a lot of issues with human rights, etc., with Wang in Shanghai. And mm. I think that's what's calling the big, that's what's causing the biggest uproar. But that's going to be the last one added. So I think South Africa will go through nice and easy. Mm. Shanghai, few politics, few bits and pieces sort yeah. out. But I to- from World Abbott's Marath- Marathon's position, I totally get it. They've mm. got to up their game. They've got to bring something new to the world. Yeah. And share it about everyone in the world. So I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good. I, I really, I really fancy the one. This might sound a bit weird, but I really fancy, and I love Australia by the way. I've been a few times. I, I really fancy the one in South Africa. I think that'd be pretty awesome, mm. actually. Um, yeah. And and I just the clues in the title, World Abbott Majors. Yeah. It's go. like not the US Abbott Majors, yeah. you know. And, and they got Toga, yeah. But you know, it, I think it's I think it's great bringing running to more people. I'm all for it. So it doesn't matter how you how you do that. And I think I think Sydney's a great addition to it. I think whether you want to rush out and do that, whatever, great for you. But I just, as you say, I think it gives other people in other parts of the world opportunities to savor and feel that, like we said about the New York City Marathon, that feeling. And I hope Sydney grows to be like the New York City Marathon, where the, where Sydney stops for the day. Yeah, come out and support all these warriors, all these heroes that are taking on twenty six point two miles. It's bloody hard. It's the toughest thing you're ever going to do. And I think it'd be great to see, because uh, Sydney's an awesome place and the, the people of Australia are just amazing. So, yeah, I think I, I think the more they spread it around, the better. I think, I think a- they've also pulled it back, uh, sorry, pulled it forward, uh, sorry, yeah, forward a few weeks. So usually, traditionally, I think Sydney's around mid-September, yeah, September, September 12th. So they're going to put it until August, just so it aligns okay with Berlin, Berlin etc. So I'm not sure about temperatures and heat with that, if that's going to have an impact. So it's the reverse for us, isn't it? So that their August is their winter, isn't it? So I suppose it's getting cooler. So oh, well, maybe yeah, that's part of the thing. Probably a nice well. time to run, actually, uh, thinking about it. Because, yeah, because yeah. it's the other way around, isn't it? Um, yeah. So Christmas, I remember when I was there one year, it was just like outrageously hot. <laughs> uh, I, I was there twice for New Year's as well. Uh, but, yeah, it was just really hot. So I just, yeah, I think uh, August is a, is a great shout. Because of, I, guess, I think it's also, we're talking about finishing lines as well. When we start looking at his marathon, some of the, I've always said it before, Tokyo, was it iconic, the finish line? No, absolutely mm. not. London, London is, you're at Buckingham Palace. Mm. Um, Berlin, Brandenburg Gate, amazing. New York, Central Park, brilliant. Yeah. Boston, going through where the finish line is, going up to Boston, Coven, Boston's Boston. Mm. Chicago, yeah, Chicago's up in Grant Park. It's not a world fantastic finish, but it's still a okay. great finish. But Australia, finishing on that Sydney, by the, oh, over the bridge, by into the Opera House, that looks special. Uh, do you know what? We talk about marathons and worlds as well. We start looking at finish lines. What about... Amsterdam's a great shout for one of the best finishes oh, around. I tell you what, that is that's unbelievable. Yeah. That's I tell you that what that reminded me of was the Great North Run. Uh where you come down the South Shields, you've done what the Great North Run is, it's like the second biggest half marathon in the world after the one in Gothenburg, right? 
by like 60,000 people. No, 50,000 people. Go go down South Shield, down a hill. You turn left, you've got a mile, but it feels like 15. All the way down, it's like a straight shoot into it. And it, and it's incredible because the, sta- like the stadium feel of everybody on top of you, and it gets really tight, doesn't it? Yeah. Even more tight this year. But the Olympic Park, or Olympic Stadium, sorry, in uh, Amsterdam, you, so you, you come, you're back into town, you come through the park, you come back into town, you turn right, and there's like the Amsterdam sign down there, and you're coming back into the Olympic Stadium. You go through the gates, and it's like you're entering the Coliseum. Awesome. And then you run basically 400 metres. No, it's not, it's not even that. It's 200 metres, maybe 300 metres on the track. It's pretty as you come in, it, it's wild. It's it's so great. It is if you've not done Amsterdam, I think it's sold out, bro. Uh, well, next year, yeah, I think it's a spe- special year next year as well. I think, I think it's forty fifth in it or something. It's, I know, yeah, or, or yeah. something like that. I'm not yeah. hundred, but uh, yeah, as you say, finishing lines, unbelievable. It, yeah. It's up there, and actually, to be honest with you, the start's not bad either because it's because you're in the stadium. It's like a rave. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> on the decks, right? And he's like bang, boom, boom. Early in the morning, you're like, Jesus, I've been to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, and, and you're all standing there on the track and you sort of, they take you round. You end, you come in, the runners come into the track. You walk down the stairs into the stadium. You walk down the stairs onto the track. Brilliant. And like you've got the infield section where you're waiting and you, you, like the waves go round the track. And it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just awesome. Yeah. I, I would thoroughly recommend to do the Amsterdam Marathon. And in, in a way, you know, I think Amsterdam should be a major. I mean, it has that world major feel to it. I, I maybe just brings another one to Europe, doesn't it? Like we were talking about before, yeah. trying to take it around the world. We've got two in Europe, three in North America. So I, I can see one coming in South America within time. But yeah, yeah but South America. Good I wonder if uh, Brazil has got a, a, a big marathon or anything like that. That'd be worth let, us looking up for, for next uh, next month. Let's have, let's have a look at that. See if there's any. We should have a look at that, see if there's any that we fancy. Because uh, I think Mexico, runners in Mexico, oh, they are hardcore. They are really true. dedicated. Mexico least, would be a good one. You get a lot of Me- these Mexican runners all over the world. They have a- Some of them, they're absolute machines. To make- and they have the best support as well. Every oh, day, well, Mar- in Berlin, the in the Berlin, the, the yeah. Mexico bit. Jesus yeah. Christ, yeah. they're nuts. Yeah. I think it's, it was an epic part. Um, epic. I remember forget when I was running Berlin lot, not this year, the year before. And I was at the Mexican bit and uh, Helen came in, you know, Hell's Bell. She yeah. came in at about 3,000 miles an hour, cut in front of me. <laughs> and I was with Ben. She didn't see us, cut in front of me because she was going so fast. And her husband was in the just by the Mexican crowd. <laughs> she gave him a kiss and she zoomed off. And I turned to Tim and I went, uh, oh, is it Tim? Oh, it's, no, it's Tiff, not. Tiff. Tiff. And I said to him, what about me? And he looks at me like, what's going on? <laughs> 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 and I don't think he twigged it. It was me. It's brilliant. Um, but yeah, it was just by that. And I remember it because it was by the Mexican bit uh, in, in the Berlin. And if you've done the Berlin Marathon, you'll know exactly. Same in Chicago. You wait, Chicago, the Mexican bit probably is one, probably I'll say it's one of the best bits of the Chicago Marathon. Really, the, the Mexican bit. quarter. Yeah. We don't get them in London, brilliant. do we? The Mexican no, bit. No, you don't do you? No. I'd like to see no. that. If, so if you're if you're from that. Um, I can I ask a question on that? Just quickly see what your thoughts are. With the support in London, mm. do you feel as though the majority of the support was. English, British. Whereas when I go to his world majors, I find that the support is the crowds, as you were just alluded to. In Berlin, I've seen Mexican, loud diverse, Mexican, American. It's very diverse. But I find London, maybe I just was a bit blinded to it. I'm not sure. I don't remember it being as diverse. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. And again, just to be clear, it's not being critical. Um, I think, no, no. I think, I think you're right. I think you, I think certain. Certain groups of supporters stand out. Mm. I think and that's what you're trying to say, right? I think certain groups of supporters stand out. Where in London, it's just like everybody's like from home, and yeah. they're all the way around. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's it feels. I tell you what, it feels like more family and friends at London are, are supporting, other than like big groups are coming out to support. Yeah. Uh, that's where I think where it's like organised. Maybe that's because I think in London, if if it's organised, chances are they're probably volunteering. So yeah. like the run clubs, like we do, you know, we have a big team of. Uh, volunteers turn out so maybe the run clubs um you know and we're not talking about the sponsored you know like the lucas a bit or anything like that where it's all you know just marketing we're talking about like the groups of people who are turning up to support yeah i th- I, I know what you're saying i i felt that mm. certain, certain races there's like 
groups of people who are there to support that you don't necessarily see at London, which is, mm. but yeah. So yeah, I, but again, that that gives each race a a different feel, definitely uh, to it. But yeah. yeah, the Mexican, the Mexican pie, probably <laughs> wild. You're like, what's going on here? <laughs> but yeah, I think Mexico would be a good, good match. So I tell you what, then. So I mean, looking back, right this year, is there, is there like a marathon that you looked at and you thought, wish I'd done that? I, we had a bit of chat about this before. You said about what do you think of this year marathon wise? There's actually one that I didn't run, and I don't know if I thought to myself. I wish I'd run it, but I was really impressed with the turnout and the way it went and the amount of people that went there had a good experience. To be fair, with our very own Manchester Marathon this year, mm. I've the reports, are, I've never really fancied it. And even watching it, mm. do I fancy it? Maybe not. But the amount of people that done it and come back with really good reports, good reviews, mm-hmm. I would say, yeah, with the resources they have and the size of it and everything, I'd say probably our most impressive Ma- Manchester this year. I'm with you on that one. Oh, it's weird. Uh, aligned again. I've got to give them a shout out. Um, if I if if I wasn't doing London in 2025, I'd go and run Manchester. Hmm. I was lucky enough to go up there um, this year to see it, uh, to be in- involved in it. I was blown away by the amount of people that were doing it, by the support in the parts that I saw. Now mm. I know because I've also run I've run the half marathon course. It was a bit quiet in places, but that's fine. Um, but I think they really, really organised it well. Uh, the only thing, as always, is getting out of there because you're stuck to the trams um, and stuff like that. But the event village was in like the cricket ground, so that was good. People had a chance to chill out and stuff like that, so that was good. And I think that event is is only going to get better. I think that's that's the thing. I think that event's going to only get better. It's sold out, I think, already. I might yeah. be wrong. No, um, you're right. Yeah, you're right. It's on the same day as as London this year, or next year, because of, I think because of Easter, basically. Yeah. Which is a shame, but if you don't get into London, you could do that. But yeah, I, I'm with you on that one. I, I, I think before this year, I didn't really have much interest in doing it. Um, and after being up there and being lucky enough to, you know, get to know some of the people who organise it and some of the people who marshal it. There's a guy up there, and I spoke about it on the podcast before, who's an absolute hero on the on the finish line, who was like, yeah. he must have saved, I'm not just making this up, he must have saved like 10 or 20 people's lives <laughs> because they come through the line absolutely ruined. And he was collect- catching them before they fell to the ground and taking them straight to a St. John's Ambulance person. Like, right. it was unbelievable to see. He was like, honestly, he was a hero. I saw him this year at the Manchester half. They put him put him in another area to sort of organise that. I think it was there, <laughs> down towards um, the, the tram station. But, yeah, I just think that's that's only going to get bigger because Manchester is such a great place. Uh, I really enjoyed being up there when I was up there, the Manchester half again. I just think that will grow in stature, and mm. I think that's a good thing. Uh, mm. You'll probably see a, a, a higher quality of elite field probably go up there as well now. Yep. Uh, with with obviously um, Adidas involved in in that uh, or have been involved in whether that changes uh, Puma did the the half, but yeah, I, th- I think that's that's probably a good chat actually in terms of looking back one that I kind of yeah I, or, or one that I saw that I wish that I would mm. I like to do now, which is weird because if I look at Brighton, I've got no interest like no, zero. Great. Yeah, I've got I've got absolutely no interest interest in that. What about would you say? Is uh, looking outside of the UK then? Is there like a? Is there like? Because people were saying to me about coming over to do Dublin, uh, which I, I'd I'd like to go and do something in Ireland, like a half or something like that. I'm not sure yeah. the Dublin marathon is something for me, uh, but that said, never never say never, right? Yeah. Uh, I think it's great. Again, this is the brilliant thing with these marathons is that you get to travel to these places and you can Definitely. you know you can add your running into your travelling. And you get to see all these cool places. Dublin's an amazing place. But is there is there a is there a race? I know we've got Valencia still to come. That's one I fancy. Actually, talking on Valencia, obviously, because of what's happened over the last yeah, month so or so. Sad. So Valencia's upcoming, uh, beginning of December. It's about about three and a half, four weeks away. Um, whether it's gonna go ahead, they still haven't hundred percent decided whether mm. it'll go ahead yet. And tell you if it does, it's gonna be emotional, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, because you get a lot. I was at the Valencia half and 
the majority of the field was made up from people that lived in Valencia or lived on that right. east coast of Spain. It's very localised, and I can imagine the marathon is going to be very much the same. So that's going to be an emotional one. It mm-hmm. will be one to remember for people doing it. So if it does go ahead, as you said before, I, I think that's that's a flat, fast course. So it's very fast course. Yeah, really. Fast. I think it's got the most. It had the most Boston qualifiers there last year that they really had any, any race in history. So yeah, really fast race. So th- that would be one that I'd like to do outside definitely. But I think as well, like you said, I touched on Dublin. A lot of the ones I'd like, not like to do, the ones I like the idea of, they're the tough ones. Like Dublin yeah. City, Loch Ness, it'd be beautiful, but bloody hell, I don't know, oh, if, I I don't know, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I fancy it. After doing Yorkshire, and I like Yorkshire, mainly because mm. uh, Tobe ran uh, with no <laughs> training. So that just kept me amused until he left me. Uh, and then I caught him up again. But um, it was it was quite sour for this. It's not because I really enjoyed Yorkshire, but it was a bit boring in places. Mm-hmm. And that was because of the weather, by the way. I ran in a storm, right? So nobody was out because it was a storm. People were told not to go out, right? So yeah. just put that out there. But it, we had a chat amongst ourselves and we was like, I don't know if this is like look, what Lick Ness is like, because it was like just, it was it was in the trees. It was just on a road out in the middle of nowhere. It was like, oh. Probably, yeah. And Probably it felt right. like a training run, which was fine because I ran that as a training run. I, I, I'd done Berlin two weeks before. I was just looking at Spigo, laughing my head off. But I think, I don't know. Yeah, I, again, I'd like to do Loch Ness. It looks beautiful up there, but as you say, they're they're the they're the tougher ones to do. And I think I think Dublin. You know what? Now I've said that. I think I kind of regret saying it. I think Dublin actually. And I'm not saying this to be off the cuff, but if, if I went over there to run it as like a training run, yeah. So I right. think it was what was it a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I think that that you know again I don't want to be blase because I'm the first person to tell you how hard these things are. Yeah. Right. They are ridiculously hard. But as somebody who is experienced and trains basically all year to do them, I feel that is something I could say, you know what, I'm going to treat that as a long run. I'll take it, you know, run easy pace, you know, and just, you know, even run walk it in for myself, you know, take it, you know, do do that. I think Dublin, now I've said that actually, because because the people of Ireland are so amazing, mm. I think that would be a good one to do. I wouldn't mind doing one like um in Italy, oh, lovely! We are. I've actually talked. We're talking about doing the half. Uh, um, it goes back to what you just said, and I know we keep banging on about it. But marathons, I love them. I love the training pad, but they are so hard. So <laughs> yeah. I've, got, I've got quite into this half marathon thing, traveling around. Yeah. And Lake Garda do a half marathon there that one of the club members done this year, and that looked absolutely stunning. really. When's that? Um, I think it was around about May time, but it did oh, look I bet. That's beautiful. Uh, yeah, she literally was right around Lake Garda. It looked absolutely stunning. So. Yeah, definitely. I fancy that one. But as you said, there's just so many all over the world. Marathons, half marathons, different events. I, yeah, I, I, I you like don't to need to be the restricted to these, these world majors. Definitely not. I think that's a, I mean, we spoke about it on the on the, the bigger show, let's call it. Yeah. Um, we spoke about this before, you know, don't get caught up in the hype around the, the world majors. You know, they're brilliant things. They're beautiful things. And as you said, the city stop and supports mad. And I would thoroughly recommend you do, you know, one of them. Okay, if you want to get into this marathon business, but don't neglect those those other ones. You know, the, uh, like you you loved Edinburgh. The, uh, the big problem with Edinburgh for me, I was again, I was thinking about doing the half again. I, I really fancy because I just again enjoyed Scotland. I enjoyed Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. The people are lovely, but it was the ball lake of getting home. Like you finished out outside of town, and that for me, I as somebody who I, don't know, I think everyone knows a neurodivergent in terms of traveling and public transport and queuing and stuff like that. that's like a worst nightmare for me so that's what puts me off but if i could finish in the middle of edinburgh i'd yeah. be there i'd i'd, I'd go, go up there in may and do it 100 percent. so Great. i'm not sure it's i'm not sure i don't think the half marathon's on the same day as the marathon so yeah, maybe yeah. Oh, it's the same Saturday. Day. i think it's sad maybe it doesn't finish at the same point i'm not sure people I think it does mind. i think it does right i think it does someone said to me about it um but yeah, no, but, I, no, but you say I really love Edinburgh. I, I like the experience I had in Edinburgh. And it, it's been well documented. It's my fastest time I ever run. I love, I love that side of it. Mm. But I, I agree with you. Up at about twenty miles, twenty-one miles, round by the country house and stuff. That oh. was quiet. That was going alongside like a two-way people coming oh. that way. You going that way? It wasn't the most prettiest no. one, but I made, I, I enjoyed it. I still love the experience. But again, it comes yeah, yeah. back to how we started this program. I've got this thing and this passion for marathon running. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't want to go and run 100 marathons a year or anything. No, no, like that. no. no one every day or them challenges. Just want to pick out them ones and just think, I want to target that one and I really want to do it. And as you said, it doesn't have to be one of them world majors. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm with you on that one now. It's like more about, 
yeah, all right, try and let if I can do a world major like in a year, if if at all possible. And again, like just to be, at, I'm going to put this out there because just to be clear. So my London Marathon places every year I've run London Marathon is through a charity place. Yeah. All right. That's always, I always do it through a charity place. Okay. Let's, let's just put that absolutely out there. I was in the amazing position to be taken to New York by New Balance and believe in the run. That was how that, and that bib was sorted out for me. So again, total transparency. Berlin was for a sports store company. London next year, charity place. Paris is uh, on my, off my own steam. All right. So I'm just putting that out there. Okay. So just, you think I'm getting all these bibs and doing all this stuff, but I'm going in the ballots like everybody else. Yep. Um, so if I get in a ballot next year uh, for something, fantastic. But if I don't, what I think that, um, you know, to wrap it all up, I think what we've agreed on is that, you know, look at Manchester, Dublin, or if you're in another part of the world, you know, Italy or whatever, and and you'll still have just the similar sort of experience as, as you would Amsterdam. Amsterdam brilliant i still i still just love it. my amsterdam medal right i tell you it's actually framed up there that's how much fun i had at it i got the, the you know the other ones up there they're, they're marathon medals behind me i point on the podcast you want me i see but i've got like marathon medals they're the only ones hung up there but up there i've got my first great north run medal which was i think 2016 something like that 2017 and next to it in a frame is my amsterdam marathon that's brilliant. how much fun i had there I just absolutely have it. Every time I think about it, it brings a smile to my face. But yeah, I think to, to circle back and to, to close off the, to the episode, if you are, you know, thinking about that, maybe you've done one and it was a major or, you know, you know, think about now going and exploring another part of the world. Yeah. Or another part of the country. Don't just stick to, you know, the, these, these, these majors. And if you, if you've done, if you're doing your first, yeah, okay, the majors are brilliant and there's something to, you know, especially if you've got to raise money for charity, it's always, it sounds funny, but it's always easy if it's like a London Marathon or yeah. New York Marathon, whatever. But, you know, there's a lot to be said for the Yorkshire Marathon. It was really, you know, it was really well organised. It was really good, you know, and, and you know, some of the more sort of Edinburgh and, and these sort of ones and further afield, they're good marathons to do, you know. Don't be... Don't be just so focused on the World Marathon Majors just because the hype that goes around. It's um... Another tip I'd like to say as well is if, mm. if you haven't done your first marathon and or you've done a marathon local and you're thinking you'd like to go and do one of these big ones somewhere else in the world, but you're not that sure, you're a bit uneasy, have a look at the relays. Because the marathon mm. relays where you get the four of you, that gives you that race day environment, mm-hmm. that race day vibe, mm-hmm. that feel. You become part of it and you might feel comfortable and confident for the next year to go back. I know Edinburgh done it. Um, I think it's Munich that do it or Frankfurt it's one of their two and you start and finish in the stadium like Amsterdam Mm -hmm. because there's the four of you what happens in in that one is when you get back to the stadium the other three team members join you and you all do the lap of the track at the finish to come round. so all four of you together your team so events like that thinking about like that you know that you take away a bit of that anxiety about going abroad to do a marathon you might have done five or six marathons in the UK but think I'm really worried about going abroad to do one Give, give one of them a go. And between the four of you, it's a lot cheaper. You might have a better experience out there for you having a bit of sightseeing. They're, they're a really good show. And say Edinburgh, the one's close to the home. Some of them do it too. Yeah. And, and as we always say, if it's if you're in the UK, New York, whatever, volunteer. Find out how you can volunteer at these events. It's another great way of, of, of being part of it, feeling it, seeing it, understanding it, smelling it, yep. um, and getting that feel for it. And then, you know, maybe do it the year after. It's another... Another sort of way to go. So, yes. Uh, so, there we go. So, that's another uh, award-winning, well, it's not yet, uh, episode of our very originally titled uh, Marathon Talk uh, with The Hobbit and Fordy. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you've got any questions that you'd like us to answer in December, should we say we do one in December? We'll try and do a monthly. Yeah. In December's edition, we're going to try and look forward um, in the December one, the Christmas special. Hayden's going to wear a Christmas jumper. Um, <laughs> And we're going to, <laughs> and we're going to talk about that. So if you've got any questions, yeah, send that in hello at 40 Um Again, join us on a Friday live uh, for our normal regular podcast at seven o'clock UK time with the team, all the panel of um, coaches and leaders and hosts and stuff and cocking about, or, you know, if running shoes or you've got a, or a running coach question, uh, then join me on a, on a live stream on Monday, eight o'clock uh, as well. Make sure you, you subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you're part of the Facebook group. Make sure you leave us a very nice review uh, on 
whatever platform you're listening to. This, what else have I got to plug, Hayden? I think that's about it. Um, I think you're done. Join the running club. That's free. You're welcome. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, so uh, off, uh, there's the outro. We shall see you all later next time on the originally titled Marathon Talk. Say bye, Hayden. See you later.